Hi everyone, it is Wednesday, November 16th, 2016, and this is episode 94 of Sarah Nova Crafts. I'm your host, Jessica. I can be found as Sarah Nova on Revelry and Twitter, and as Sarah Nova Crafts on Instagram. You can find the show notes for today's episode on my blog or in the Ravelry group. Uh, if you're interested in talking with me or asking me any questions, I have an AMA thread in the Ravelry group. You can always respond to the post on my blog, or I did create a Facebook group. So um, just search for Sarah Nova Crafts, and it should come up on Facebook. Um, Sarah Nova Crafts, Sarah Nova Crafts, po Sarah Nova Crafts podcast. Got to get that podcast word in there. But I did create a group. It is public. Feel free to request to join. I'd be happy to have you if you have any questions for me. You can ask them then. I'm going to be posting links to both the episode and to VKNs when I have them. Um, speaking of VKNs, there's actually going to be no VKN this week because tomorrow night, in fact, Kevin and I are going to go see Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Thusly, <laughs> I will not be hosting a VKN. If one of the other ladies would like to jump in and host for me, that is perfectly fine. But I, in fact, will not be hosting. So, um... I don't have a lot of knitting for you folks this week, but I do have some um, knitting related stuff. Um, I did get gifted some patterns for my birthday, which was yesterday, and I also got gifted a pattern by a friend last week and something else earlier this week. So, actually going to pull those up, and um, then I am going to um, be able to show them to you. Um, because, you know, I forgot to download them and print them before I started. Because, you know, that's the thing. Um, <laughs> so. Oh, the ta oh, she gave me the tab. Yes, awesome. Okay. So I'm going to print the first page of this one. Just page one. Just page one. My printer's going to yell at me because it thinks it's out of ink. But that is not... I don't care about that at the moment. Um... Yes, just print the thing already. Oh my god. Continue. I know, I'm out of ink. I'm out of an ink color. So my printer's yelling at me because I used aftermarket cartridges, and it thinks one of them's out, and it thinks it's not a genuine HP cartridge, even though it... Whatever. Yeah, it's just one of those ridiculous things where, like, I'm just like, just print. Will you? Just print, right? So... <laughs> I just want it to print. As long as it prints, we're good. Ta-da, thank you. I just want the first page. Because I want to be able to share it with you folks. Because it's not going to come out good if I print it, if I show you it on my phone. It's not going to work. So, of course, I'm going to go have to go through this whole rigmarole again. I really should have printed these um, before I started talking to you folks. But, you know, I'm behind this morning. So, um... And then I did get another pattern. I'm just trying to make sure I have everything, you know, because, you know, it's nice to be able to show you folks the stuff. Just, you know, one of those things. <sighs> you going to print the other things? So, anyways, printing. <laughs> printer not activated. Error code. Of course there's an error code on the printer. Of course it throws an error code. It's just one of those days, right? So... Anyways, on to podcast-related stuff. Um, I did, in fact, open a finished object thread for November. That is in the Ravelry group. Um, like I said, the Facebook group has been created. I got the pattern gifts. Um, I did cast on a new project, and I did get some birthday gifts, and I had an interesting weekend, which I'll tell you folks about. Um, but first, the project that I cast on um, was a gift from Selma of the Two Tangled Skeins podcast. She gifted me Shine, which I'm almost done the first section. It is a um, pattern that she herself actually knit on the podcast, on the Two Tangled Skeins podcast. And um, it's, a, it's just like a simple scarf thing. I'm going to show you the not crinkled version of the pattern. Um, that is actually like very easy to knit and has some very good results. Um, I pulled some stash that I've had for a while um, for the pattern. I have some... Um, some Lorna's laces. Um, it's her uh, shepherd's sock in the color Ravenswood. Ravenswood. Um, uh, why are you not printing? How do I? Okay. Um. 
I don't know why I didn't have the proper print selected, but okay, now it'll print. Now I can show you. But anyways, this is the color I'm using. It's, as you can see, it's a variegated skein, and it's knitting up variegated, but that's fine because this pattern, the only, you only have the eyelet lace. That's like the most complicated part of the pattern is the eyelet lace. So uh, it's not that bad. And the page is printing now, so I can show you the pretty, pretty pictures. So here it is. Here is Shine. You can see it's got the eyelets and it's a scarf and it's really nice. And this is by um, Janika, uh, Janina Kalio Design. Um, if I, I probably didn't pronounce that right at all. Be nice if the camera focused on me. Hello, camera. Anyways, um, so that is what I am making. This. So it's going to be nice. It's going to be a nice wide scarf. Not quite stole width, but wide. It's supposed to be like 16 inches or 40 centimeters across. So it's wide, but not super, super wide. And then um, earlier this week, I was gifted the Running Through Socks by Brandy Miller, who is one of my friends. She is in like the group of ladies who I talk to all the time. It is a sock pattern designed to work with striped and variegated yarn. You should go check it out. I will try to remember to link it in the show notes. I'm turning autofocus off so that I can have it focus on me because that would be nice. I'm going to make a note to link Brandy's pattern so that I remember to do that. And then the lovely Sarah from um, the Canadian Knitter Podcast and also from the After Hours, After Hours Knitters group. I can never say it right. Podcast. Um gifted me the Tau, which is a Melanie Berg pattern. It's a sweater I've been interested in for a while, and it was on my wish list. So here is the Tau. As you can see, it's by Melanie Berg. So it's got um, a nice panel up the front of the sweater, and then detail on the cuffs of the sleeves and the hem. Other than that, it's a pretty basic stockinette sweater, but that detail is what makes it really nice. So that's the patterns I was gifted from people. Um, the towel was for my birthday, which I, like I said was yesterday. Um, did get a couple of gifts from other people. So um, Kevin got me a new Fitbit. Please ignore my arm. I'm still getting eaten by bugs. It's not pretty. Please ignore the splotches. I swear I'm not sick or have leprosy or anything. But I got a new Fitbit because my old one kicked the bucket. So there you go. You can see. Um, and he also got me um, one of the older Pokemon. Now it's an older Pokemon game. Pokemon White because I already have black. So he got me white. And I know it's a Nintendo DS, not even a 3DS game. But I had one and not the other, and so he got me that, which was really sweet of him. Um, and uh, let's see. Let's stick that post-it somewhere. <laughs> Slightly all over the place this morning because, well, it's it's been a little crazy. Um, so I, I did, excuse me. I did, I did adult stuff this month and this past week, like, Pay my car registration and make an appointment to go get my car inspected because in New Hampshire, you have to do that in the month of your birth. So, you know, it's November. Gotta do all that fun jazz. I did, however, get myself a really nice birthday present. It is something I've been looking at for a while. Um, and it is um, uh, this pair of headphones that were funded on Indiegogo a couple of years ago. And they had a wired version, but they finally came out with a Bluetooth wireless version that color changes and I am just like count me in so I might actually have to have to bend down a little bit for you guys to see these properly but I got the cat ear headphones aren't these awesome and here's the thing is that they they should turn on where's the button oh, I'm pressing the wrong button it would help if I press the correct button to turn the lights on so see And they change color, too. Isn't that awesome? I am such a nerd, I know. But these are just, like, the coolest thing. And these, this part is speakers. So I can literally be mis listening to music down here, and then I can put it on the speakers. Isn't it great? I know. I'm... S <laughs> um, but, yeah, I bugged the... <laughs> so they're available um, at Brookstone. Like, you know, the company. I don't know if they're available anywhere else. Um, but... Like, I've been bugging the guys at Brookstone for, like, a week because I saw them on their website. And I was going in because I wanted to try them on because I actually have a kind of a small head. So, like, big over-ear headphones like these are don't necessarily always fit my head. 
And the only way I can wear these is actually wearing them on the smallest, um, because they extend, right? Wearing them on the smallest setting, so like completely pushed in and everything, right? That's the only way they fit my head. And, um, but so I wanted to try them on because I knew that the wired ones fit, but I figured there'd be a slight size change between the two and I was right. Um, but they fit and they fit well. And so last night they finally had them in stock and I got to try them on. And so I got them for myself and I am super excited. I got my kitty ear headphones. I've been wanting these things for like two years. So I decided this year, birthday present to myself, kitty ear headphones. <laughs> Cause I am a total dork. I know. Um, so the other thing that happened this past week was that at my synagogue, we had a singer um, named Shuli Nathan, Shuli Nathan, if you want to um, use the, the English version of her name, um, but Shuli Nathan, who, um, she uh, is a very famous Israeli singer, and she came to our synagogue, and she is famous for singing the song um, Yerushalayim Shel Zahav, which is um, Jerusalem of Gold. And it's a song that um, was originally sung right before the start of the Six Day War in Israel in 1967. And then um, it kind of became an, an unofficial anthem for Israel over the years. And so um, it was a great honor for her to come and sing for us and to sing song for us um, at our synagogue. And we actually, um, a lot of us sang along. I will admit a lot of us sang along. Um, during it, because, you know, most of us at least uh, know the chorus, um, and uh, it's one of those songs where um, most Jews in America know them, um, or know it, or, you know, are familiar with it, and, um, you know, and it's, it's, the song talks about a few different things, um, you know, about how, um, like, you know, Jerusalem. So basically, the reason the song became an anthem was because when the time the song was written, and the song was written by um, by Naomi Shemer, um, who was another famous Israeli, and she, oh, I got a book bite on my hand. I'm sorry, it's itchy. Um, by Naomi Shemer, and at the time she wrote the song, Jerusalem was still divided because when Israel was founded in 1948. Um, Jerusalem was actually split in half like Berlin was. You know how you had East and West Berlin. Well, you had, um, Jerusalem was split as well. And it was split between the Israeli side and the uh, Jordanian side. And the Jordanian side is actually where the Temple Mount it is. Um, it was actually that half of Jerusalem was where the, the Temple Mount is. So the Jews in Israel had no access to the Temple Mount. And when the Six Day War happened... Um, Israel actually took that took that territory. Now it's just become incorporated part of Israel because Jordan kind of went, yeah, you can have it. It's fine. Um, I mean, I'm some. I'm that was a very short summary of a very long political process. <laughs> but in summary, Jordan eventually just went, yeah, you can have it. So Jerusalem was reunified. And at the time when the Israeli army retook Jerusalem in 1967 and reunified it, um, look at me. Um, they took shofar, which is um, a ram's horn, horn, and blew it from the top of the Temple Mount. And so a verse was added at the end of the song to reflect that Jerusalem got reunified. So it's kind of like an unofficial anthem for Israel. There was actually apparently a movement to make it the official official national anthem of Israel, but it got knocked down by their version of the Senate. So um, it's one of those funny things where, like, you know. But anyways, it was a great honor to have her come and sing for us, and I had her sign um, one of the discs I got, so this is one of her albums. She had three of them for sale. Unfortunately, none of them actually contain the song, Jerusalem of Gold. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes to a YouTube clip with um, Jerusalem of Gold, so that's one album. And then this is her tribute to um, Karla Bach, which is, um, I can't remember his first name, Shmoni, Shmoni, which is basically like traditional Jewish hymns and songs and stuff. And then one of her other um, album songs of praise. So, and yes, the album is backwards. You will notice it is over here and not over here like it should be. Guess what? These are Israeli albums. Hebrew goes right to left. So guess which side the hinge is on. Yeah. See how it opens? Does not open how you think it opens. Yeah, it opens like this. That's how, yeah. Hebrew goes the other direction. Japanese CDs are often like this as well, FYI. 
because they go in the other way too. Um, fun fact. So it was very much an honor to have her there and sing for us. And I did record some of her performance, but I'm not going to um, include it here. But it was very nice to have her, and she's a very good singer and very talented. Um, her English isn't the greatest, but, you know, she's not an American. So I think that is... Oh, one more thing. I got one more thing. I got my last Hello Yarn Fiber Club shipment. Now, the reason I didn't continue is that, A, I need to spend more. B, it's a lot of money, and C, I already have two full bins of fiber, and we live in a very small apartment. Well, not very small, but we live in a small apartment. So I decided when my renewal came up that I, in October that I was not going to renew. So I have not renewed my fiber club. This is going to be my last shipment, but it's a very pretty one. If you haven't seen it yet and you don't want spoilers, look away now. This is the October 2016 colorway. It's UK Shetland wool and Tussa silk top in the peak color colorway. It's like oranges and browns and greens and reds, and it's very fall, and I it's very pretty. So, that's it for this episode. Um, like I said, there will not be a VKN tomorrow night unless one of the other ladies would like to post it for me. Um, and I will hopefully see you sometime next week. I can't guarantee when I'll record again. Um, I don't have to be into work until 4 o'clock this afternoon, which is why I have the time to record this morning. But um, hopefully um, it will work out and I can record for you sometime around midweek next week. Um, it is Thanksgiving week next week, so again, there's going to be no VKN next week either because it will be Thanksgiving Day and I will be having Thanksgiving here at home. Um, I'm not going to my family. I am Kevin and I are hosting here. Um, I will try to record Tuesday or Wednesday. I might record on Monday. We'll see. At my skip my work schedule is kind of all over the place right now because um, my boss keeps reorganizing. My manager keeps reorganizing for the holiday weekend. So, excuse me. They did the sleep last night. Anyways, I'm going to say goodbye and thank you, and I hope to see you again. So I will just say have a good week, and I will see you at some point next week. Have a good one. Bye.